Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire drawing process of this Halloween special life-size skull drawing. So let's get started. These are the art slides I'm going to use for this drawing and you can pause the video right here to note them down. I'm using this premium 350 GSM paper by Gruppo Cordinons, which was imported from Belgium. And the drawing portion area is 24 cross 24 inches. I drew the outline using grid method and you can find the detailed step-by-step -step process from making the grid to outlining on my Patreon profile. Link is in the description. Okay, so let's start the shading process and first of all, I'm darkening the directional lines first and then lightly mapping the areas which have highlights and are lighter than the rest of the portion. Now I'm using an HP graphite powder with a bigger size dry brush and make sure you use this circular scribbling motion to avoid patchiness. If you don't have a graphite powder kit, you can make one at home by watching this video from the cards. Notice that I'm adding this layer with a variable pressure and layering graphite in some areas to achieve desired lighter and darker tones. As the first layer is done, so let's blend this layer thoroughly using a cotton ball. And as we can see that this drawing has a very smooth and shiny metal texture. So I'm again going over the base layer with a tissue paper to achieve desired smoothness and layering graphite in the areas which are darker in the reference image. Make sure to add this layer in a circular scribbling motion to avoid patchiness and texture. Okay, so as the base layer is done, let's move on to the contrast. And first of all, I'm darkening the directional lines on the right side of the skull using an 8P pencil. I'm also shading the areas in between to achieve desired darker texture. The top right portion has a little bit darker base. So I'm shading the area first using an 8P powder with a medium sized dry brush and then adding contrast using an 8P pencil. Notice that I'm keeping the pressure on the pencil variable to achieve different tones depending on the area I'm working on and then blending this layer thoroughly using a medium sized dry brush. Okay, so now it's time to add highlights and lighter texture and I'm firstly cleaning the tip of my perfection eraser by rubbing it on a fabric castle scrapper. You can also use any rough surface or a sandpaper for this purpose. I'm using a low angle and less pressure to subtly lift up some of the excess graphite from these brighter portions. Now after adding highlight, some of the darker areas look a little bit patchy. So to fix them, I'm adding a very soft layer using my 2 edge pencil. This layer will fill the empty spots as well as blend the previous layers together, giving the required darkness and texture. Now to make the head look more shiny, I firstly used scribe to brighten up the highlights but it wasn't doing much. So I shifted to a regular eraser and lightened the area very carefully. This step will make the overall area more shiny and bright. And by the way, you can get access to our premium content and support this channel through Patreon. You can sign up through different membership levels and get access to all the outlines and trade references etc. We have an ever-growing library of hundreds of exclusive and real-time tutorials and you will get access to 4 new tutorials every month. You can also post your artworks in our active community of patrons and participate in our weekly critique sessions where I give my honest and positive critiques on your artworks. So you can improve your skills and get better with your drawing. Visit the link in description and become a premium member today. Now I'm using my perfection eraser to add highlights on all the areas which are a little bit higher and brighter. As this skull has some hammered metal texture, so to create such an effect, I'm adding soft highlights using a random scribbling motion. It will create the perfect hammered texture as required, just like this. Keep on doing the same scribbling motion in all the areas which have prominent texture and you will get a realistic effect just like the reference image. I'm repeating the similar process of adding shadows and highlights for the rest of the skull portion. Moving on to the face portion and first of all I'm adding a base layer in the nose and eyes using an 8P pencil. Notice that I'm keeping the pressure on my pencil variable to achieve desired tones. I'm adding another layer using the same pencil to add depth to the base layer. Okay, now moving on to the cheeks and teeth portion and I'm shading and darkening the directional lines first. Shading the correct places is very important in your drawing as it gives the overall drawing a 3D effect. Okay, so as the shading is done, so let's move on to the blending process and I'm using my medium sized dry brush for this purpose. I'm blending this layer in a circular scribbling motion to avoid patchiness. After blending process, some of the shades got dull. 
So to fix this and to add more shadows and details, I'm adding another layer using the same 8P pencil. Notice that I'm only darkening the areas on which light is not hitting directly to create a 3D effect. Okay, so now I'm blending the areas using a medium sized dry brush dipped in HP graphite powder. This technique will fill the empty spaces along with blending the layer thoroughly without making it look kind of dull. During the whole layering and blending process, the outline of the nose and some teeth on the left side faded away. So I'm using my sharp tip B pencil and adding this very thin line to define the outline in the required areas. I'm going back and forth with my tools to adjust the shade and shapes. Now to blend the edges of the shadows, I'm using my blending stump and lightly going over the edge to blend them seamlessly with the base layer. Okay, so now it's time to add highlights in the face using a perfection eraser as I did before. I'm adding a mixture of blended highlights and small strokes to lighten the required areas. As we know that the texture of a perfection eraser is kind of chalky. So when you don't clean the tip frequently after using it on a darker area, it makes the tip dirty. And when you use the same perfection eraser on the lighter surface, all the graphite from the tip starts depositing on the paper, making the area patchy and dark. So make sure to clean it more oftenly while working on this area to achieve better results. As the softer base of the highlights is done, so now I'm using my Mono Zero eraser and adding another layer of relatively brighter highlights over the previous ones. This layering will make the overall texture look more 3D and realistic. I'm adding small dots and strokes on the cheeks portion to create a metallic skull texture. To add a very fine and sharp texture, I'm using my sharp tip electric eraser and adding the mixture of small dots and strokes, depending on the area I'm working on. Never hesitate to go back and forth with your tools until you are satisfied with the final results. Now I'm using my jet roll pen and adding this intricate texture to make the upper gum and cheeks portion look more shiny. Okay, so let's move on to the lower portion of the face and I'm repeating the similar process as I did before for the upper portion. I'm using an 8P pencil and darkening the direction lines along with shading the area lightly. Then using my P pencil to add a base layer in the teeth portion and blending it with a medium sized dry brush later on. For the lighter texture on teeth, I'm using my perfection eraser and adding a softer base first in the left side teeth. And then for the rest of the upper teeth, I'm using my Mono Zero Eraser and adding the mixture of sharp and blended strokes. To make them more shiny, I'm using my Sharp Tip Electric Eraser and going over the previous highlights in certain areas. This will make the teeth look more 3D and realistic. I'm repeating the similar process for the lower teeth as well. For the texture on the gums and teeth portion, I'm using my Electric Eraser and carefully adding the small dots to mimic the shiny effect. Okay, so moving on to the chin portion and I'm taking a clean tissue paper and blending this area thoroughly first. It will blend the direction lines along with adding a very light base layer, which is perfect for adding future dark layers of shadows and texture. Then I'm using my B pencil to darken the outline so that it doesn't fade away during the blending of future layers. Now I'm using my 8P pencil to create these dense and cracked texture just by shading and adding thin irregular lines in these specific areas. I'm keeping the pressure on the pencil variable to create a smooth transition of darker texture with the base layer. Now firstly blend this layer using a medium sized dry brush in circular scribbling motion. And then to further fine tune this layer, I'm going to use a cotton ball and going over the dark texture very carefully. Make sure you don't over blend this layer as too much smoothness in this portion will take the essence of rough texture away. I'm adjusting some shadows and adding textures using my 8P pencil. Before moving further towards the highlights, let's tone down some of the darker areas using a kneaded eraser. I'm dabbing it over the areas to create a sense of depth and 3D effect. Now it's time to add highlights and lighter texture. So first of all, I'm using my perfection eraser and adding these thin and soft strokes. I'm going back and forth to perfect the darker and lighter texture simultaneously to achieve detailed texture. And then to make the previous highlights pop up a little bit more, I'm using my electric eraser and going over them very carefully. I'm also adding small dots in between to achieve the required shiny texture, just like this. 
Okay, so let's move on to the base and first of all, I'm adding a base layer in the dark areas using an 8P powder. I'm adding this layer with a medium sized draw brush in a circular scribbling motion to avoid texture and patchiness. And then to shade the lighter areas, I'm going to use my HP graphite powder and filling in the areas with a variable pressure to achieve required tones. I'm leaving some areas around the edges for the future highlighting process. And when you are done with the base layer, start blending it thoroughly with a bigger size dry brush. As the right side has a shadow of the skull on the base. So I'm adding another layer using a 3B pencil. And then blending the whole base area using a cotton ball and tissue paper to achieve a smooth base. Okay, now it's time to define the edges of the base and I'm adding these parallel lines on the front side using an 8P pencil and scale. And then repeating the same process for the remaining sides and edges as well. I'm also shading the area around the edges to create depth and to fill the empty spaces. To blend this layer, I'm using my blending stump and going over the edges very carefully. As the base in the reference image is very smooth, so I'm going back and forth with my tools to achieve desired results. And then to add highlights in the base, I'm firstly sharpening the tip of my perfection eraser and then lightening the edges to create a 3D effect. I'm also cleaning the spill of the graphite using the same perfection eraser with a lighter pressure. While blending the base, some of the details in the skull got dull. So I'm adjusting it using my sharp tip electric eraser. I'm going around the outline to add brighter strokes and then blending it with a perfection eraser later on. And then using the same electric razor to fine tune the highlights on the edges of the base as well. For the final touches in the whole drawing, I'm going back and forth with my tools. I'm also cleaning the spill of the graphite around the outline using the electric razor. And with this last step, we are done with this life-size skull drawing. It takes so much time and efforts to create this tutorial, so please leave a like if you enjoyed this one. It helps me a lot as an artist. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.